Հարգելի բարեկամներ, արձագանք հեռուստահանկերությունը սկսում էր տոնական հաղորդումը շնորհավորելով մեր բոլոր հայրենակիցներին Քրիստոսի ծննդյան առիթով, թող սուրբ ծննդյան առաջ նորքը տարածվի մերասկի և հայրենիքի վրա։ Քրիստոսի անչապելի շնորքը, անսահմանգութը, գերմարդկային խաղությունը թող մեզ հետ լինի, թող մեր տիրոչ Հիսուս Քրիստոսի լույսը տարածվի յուրականչուրի սոջախում և լուսավորի մեր կյանքի ուղին, դեպի բարություն, հարգանք, ոգնել մեկ Այստոր Քրիստոսի ծնընդով և նրա առաջ նորներով ոշտված եկի կավելի համախմված լինենք մեր հայրենիքի և հայության շուրջը, որպեսի միասին դիմակայենք բոլոր դժվարություններին։ Սիրենք մի միանց կանզի Քրիստոս սերը, Քրիստ Հայաստանյան տարակիլագյան եկերիցին, մերթեր իսուս Քրիստոսի ծնդիան օրը նշում կումվարի վեցին։ Եվ այստոր երեկույան կատարում է ճրակալույթի կատարակ, ճրակալույթ նշանում է ճրակները վար է ընձաներ։ Ե� Հնրով Հիսուս որ շրագում է պրգիչ։ Եվ 30 տարեկանից իր կարշությունը սկսեց, կարշության ամբող չէ այդ կաղափարախությունը և իր կենցաղը ապրիլակերպը գրված է չորս հավետարանրում Մաթյոս Մարկուս ուկասի � Քրիստոսի սովորությածը մեզ հետ ապրելակերպն է, հարաբերությունը մարդ ու հետ, մարդ աստու հետ։ Եվ եթե կուզեք եմ անել, ոլոր պիլիսոպաններին, եթե իրենց գաղափարության միջից հանենք, իրենց գաղափարախոսությությությությու� Ես հաղթեցի աշխարին, դուք էլ այդպես արեք, այն բոլոր, ես հաղթեցի աշխարին Քրիստոս ասորը հասկանում, որ բոլոր այդ փորձությունները, որոք մեզ ճանապային հանդիպում են, պիտի կարովանակ հաղթեցի ինչպես Քրիստոս 
Manu Kusus inci hamar yeka. Yemiş bir petke anın kurbesi yirgin ki arkadaşlar arjana. Vurteriz vatar verin, vurteriz heras verin. Cana para inşpes turist veya darlan gibi bir aslat. Sabır mesut ve Kristos, vuri ne pat, vuri hamar yeka yeka başkan. Yem vuri hamar mı gayskan ulakın. Arkadaş pes bir tarım için ne kim gelen kam tağa vurtunur. Zanund zatik var tavar. Vela pokum nasbat azı, kaç filat, süt kaç filat. Aşkın tonları hacır tura, bugün resim nasvatı merelot. Bugün resim katar mı patarak, bolcuda bolur silmek gibi manuslar mı nesyanların ay silüciyan. Ne patak bu ne? Mek toni oraya gelirse ki bugün resim para bana mı Kristos için, para bana mı haruç için. Aynı ulak için bugün resim katar mı bolur niyasin nesşeme kayt tona. Hacır soru gülüme kiriz manat. Başta bu falu, latselu. Al gülüme gayet avet ise, lüret anlıyor mu? Çünkü tanrılarin var Kristos tanrı. Bu var hingi vesin gider, anlıyor mu? Mekhe çıkardı. Ben katırma kastuz, bu ormanda var. Bela bela ilen çok hamar. Başta kastım ne? Pati ve çektiriz. Ortigan ki gerisi, ay tonu neşen. Kastım pati ve hargan kesen. Bu ro ve sonra gelen ki katır ki benim tanrılarim hamar. Mücve ilen çok hindir ama ormanasyon, diye mi bunu zamanak? Miyasi para bana lüvas var. Ayla pes anı mı sade adam mı? Amin şey işte Kristos ne kan tonu? Aşkın karar olmuşunda merak olsa, buraya ne Kristos ne var? Peki ne şey? Ambok şu tiyam. Zıktı mı? Çamı çok fazla, banjara var mı? Ne tür kilagi mi? Anaz ne pes? Uluş şaşat esaktır, gir kirk ama var gülüm anne. Kat namı seyir seyir zaman seyir seyir zaman kartın hamara çok yok da gülüm. Bayt aşkı zaman o otur. İmasta kartı sarta haytı. Hem ne kan mı? Tümbat ya çamı çok fazla var. Zeknerin, yo banjaların zaten ki paragay ne fark ettiğe var, artık giden gince kurtarmışım. Ama işte size karsın, çamı çok falan da zeknerin ne ayse aynı bolet, mez mez et bandları çıkan bolu, estonları sattım, hivanları sattım, lasımın ne evet hivanları, yetemek iskapes harabanı kastmaz, yev avat kovmaz kastın, hivanları sattım, çünkü hivanlar şenlet. Ama ne kadar bolu ora, hem stalin kısmı hivanı besle, Kristos etsinim. Ete bu fet kesin ki bu işte. Մեկը որացության օր է, կողմեց, բավ է, որ կողմեց։ Հարգելի բարիկամներ, եթերում արձականք երոստայան կերությունն է, մենք շահորնակում ենք մեր հաղորդումը նորություններով։
Հայաստանի տնտեսական ակտիվության ցուցանիշը 2018 թվականի տարևերջին կազմել է 5 և կես տոքոս։ Նախկինի պես տնտեսության ակտիվության ցուցանիշում մեծ մասը բաժին է ընկնում սպասարկումների ոլորտին, որտեղ գերակը շերմասը ունեն խաղատները։ Աստ Հայաստանի Հանրապետության կարավարության որոշման պետք է ամեն բան արվի, որպեսի պահպանվի մակրո տնտեսական կայանությունը խերախուսվի մաստավոր ներդրումները։ Կարավարությունը նաև մակսային և հարկային արտոնություններ Երկուազերտասնինը թվականին Հուսաստանը կշարնակի և ասաջակցել լերնայի Հառաբաղի հիմնախնդրի կարգավորմանը ասել է ադրբեջանում Հուսաստանի դաշնության դեսպան Միխայլ բոչարնիկովը հավելելով, որ զգուշավոր Նրա խոսքերը հիմնված են 2018 թվականի վերջին տեղի ունեցած հակամարդության կողմերի, ադրբեջանի և Հայաստանի արտակին գործերի նախարարությունների ղեկավարների, էլմար Մահմեդյարովը և զոհրավ մնացականյանի հանդիպման արձունքներից։ Հատկապես մեր այն հայրենակիցները, որոնք չունեն հնարավորություն մեր հաղորդումները դիտել հեռուստայեկրանից, կարող են դիտել կոմպյուտրի միջոցով, ծանկացած ժամին, ծանկացած երկրում ու կաղաքում։ Ուրեմն հիշեք արձագանքթիվի.կամ և Ադերբեջանի նախագա իլհամ ալիևը իր տարվա վերջի ելույթում նշել է, որ երկրի հզոր ռազմական ներուժը Հառաբաղյան հակամարդության կարգավորման հիմնական նախապայմանն է։ Ադերբեջանի ներկաս պարազինությունը � Աստ նրա ադրբեջանը կշարնակի հզորասնել իր բանակը։ 2019-ը թվականին բազմաթիվ պայմանագրերի շնորհիվ ադրբեջանը կունենը ամենը արդիական սպարազինությունը և ռազմական տեխնիկան։ Իդեպ աստվյալների ադրբեջանի ռազմական The 2019 Armenian Heritage Cruise has the best entertainment with three amazing bands, Harut Pambukjan, Kevork Artinian, and Hachik Jingirian. Also joining us is comedian Vahe Babarian. Cultural events include George Akjayan on Armenian genealogy, award-winning filmmaker Barat Maronyan, Anahid Yaramian of the Cosmic Race Center in Armenia, and acclaimed genocide historian Dr. Taner Akcha. Sailing January 20th to 27th, 2019, book now at armenianheritagecruise.com. Թուրկյայի նախագահականից միշնորդություն է ներկայացվել երկրի խորդարան ուտ պատգամավորի անձրան մեխլությունից զրկելու համար։ Այդ ուտ պատգամավորների մեջ է նաև կրդամետ ժողովրդների դեմոքրատական գուսակցության Հարգելի բարեկամներ ձեր ուշտադրությանն ենք ներկայասնում վերջին նկարահանումները սինեմատագրավիկ ոչով։ Կարող եք ոգտվել մեր ծառայությունից ձեր հարսանեք անձրնձյան մկրտության և այլ անձնական
Forbes է կազմել է միլիարդ հատերերի ամենամիավարկանիշը, որոնց համար անցնող տարին առավելագույնս հաջող է եղել։ Հաջողակ միլիարդ հատերերի ծուցակը գլխավորում է ամազոնի հիմնադիր ջև բեզոսը, նրա կարողությունը ավելացել է 27 միլիարդ դոլարով։ Արձագանք հեռուստան կերությունը շարունակում է կազմակերպել ճանապարորդություն դեպի Հայաստան։ Ինչպես համոզվել են արձագանքի հետ նախկինում ճամփորդածները, դու կմնակ հարմարավետ ու թանկարժեք հյուրանոսներու� Եվ ամենակարևոր նայն է, որ բոլոր պայմանները ստեղծված են ավելի փոքրիկ խմբով և ավելի ջեր միջավայրում լավագույն ժամանցը ացկասնելու համար։ Եվ այսպես շտապեք զանգահարել արձագանք հերոստան
հարգելի բարեկամներ շարունակում ենք մեր հաղորդումը եթերի մարձական կերուստան կերությունը։ came to Jerusalem as a result of the genocide committed against the Armenians by the Ottoman Turks from 1915 to 1923. Both hailed from the Musadar area of Turkey. My father was transported via French warship to Port Said, Egypt, where refugee camps had been set up by the Allies. Mr. Reynolds, headmaster of St. George's, an Anglican mission school in Jerusalem, visited the Lazaret refugee camp to choose five boys for St. George's school. My father, Haruchun Boyajian, was one of them. Also chosen were Paul and Sarkis Karakashian, who became Haruchun's brothers-in-law. These young men were the refugees whose story of survival and endurance is told in Franz Werfel's story, The 40 Days of Musadagh. My mother's journey was rather different. Her mother, Karun, had died shortly after childbirth. Her father, Hovannes, died of a heart attack during military maneuvers with the Armenian Volunteer Force in Cyprus. Her aunt, saddled with three children of her own, could not care for her, so she placed her with an Arab Muslim family in Urfa, Turkey. Her Armenian identity was concealed. After a few years, this aunt took my mother to be with her older sister, Zaruhi. Somehow, my mother and her sister Zaruhi managed to join their brothers in Jerusalem. While my mother was training as a nurse, her brother's friend Haruchun volunteered to tutor her in English. They fell in love and were married September 27, 1930. I, Lucy Boyajian, was born in Jerusalem on December 14, 1932 at the government hospital. We are in the Armenian convent in the old city part of Jerusalem, and we are at the St. James Church. This is the church where I was baptized, and uh, my brother Haig and Anahid were both baptized here. But my brother Peter was baptized in the Anglican St. George's Cathedral. Here they're singing. Come, come, come. That's the part I like. Go I ahead, go ahead. Go We are here at the Gulbenkian Library to meet George Hintelian, who's going to give us the history of the Armenians and our heritage in Palestine. Yeah, 32 30 years 30. ago, I was here with my parents. Yeah, he interviewed Daddy, and I promised to bring my father back the next year so he would continue interviewing. Right, but my Joseph. dad passed away within a week or two. 
was a shock. Yeah. But it's a joy to come and see you 32 so years the, later. The successors are here. You know, yes. the, mm -hmm. Now, another moving, touching thing would be... Now, here we have about 200 volumes. I mean, when Armenians came as survivors, they got together in every town, and each town created its own story. Huh? Armenians of Aintab or Harpert. So each volume talks about the town and the village from where they survived. As you know, in the genocide, 70 towns were destroyed and 3,500 villages. So we have here something like 200 volumes. But in the whole library, we have 28,000 memoirs about the genocide. So it's a huge collection, 28,000. And Turks are saying, how can we defeat 30,000 volumes? Yeah, and they still deny. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's what a liar does, deny, deny, deny. The uh, history of the Armenians in the whole land is a solid uh, 1,600 years. Uh, the reason is chronological, uh, because Armenians accepted Christianity as a state religion in 301. One of their first thoughts was coming here. Since 19th century, we have been blessed by new finds, uh, like mosaics on Mount of Olives, mosaics yeah near Damascus Gate, yeah. etc. Of course, a mosaic means a very rich presence. Usually a f floor. important church would have a mosaic floor. So Armenians had a very important and very stretched presence all over the city. Let's not forget that until the coming of the Turks, uh, Jerusalem was part of Egypt. In Egypt, there is an important Armenian community I mean, throughout the ages. So they used to come or trickle into the Holy Land. So this way you have always the replenishment of the community. Yeah. During the genocide, did the population spike substantially or did it trickle in over a period of time? Okay, it's, I, have, I have studied this period. Uh, you know, people erroneously say that thousands of Armenians came here. Uh, looking at the records, we, we say like this, when Jamal Pasha was here, who was the high commissioner or the high commander, only 700 people came here, which is between 1914 and 1917. From where? These are dependents of soldiers. For example, if an Armenian soldier was a very important mechanic or he had a profession, he was needed for the army, he could bring in his family. his family or his mother or his sisters. The main Armenians came after 1920, not 1918. Between 1918 and 20, it was very poor, this area. But the big Armenian, uh, I mean, bulk of Armenians came from Cilicia after the French gave it over to the Turks. Then we had like 7,000 Armenians. This is a generation who had, which had no sense of deprivation because everybody had lost everybody. Huh? Mm. You had, on the one hand, you had no psychological out, outlet. Nobody would hear you. Because if you say anything, you say, oh, my whole family is wiped out. So in a way it's good because you don't become naggy or you become tough. But at the same time, nobody is ready to hear you psychologically like my grandmother, huh, who lost her husband in 1916. She, she was 21. There was a whole generation who always stayed in black and they never married. So th this generation made big sacrifices, but they had the mission to rebuild the nation. Mm. Teachers, good teachers, good uh, mothers. To rebuild the nation here? Everywhere. Everywhere. While Jerusalem became an important center, I mean, for our numbers, think we had twice this problem. Once in 1917 to 1924, a huge wave of uh, refugees. The next one is 1948.
Wow, this is so different. This is now the United Nations Office of Coordination of Human Affairs. Before, from 1938 till about 1942, this was our home. This used to be the dining room. My room was here. It was our, my bedroom. And my, there was a bed here. My brother and I were playing to see who could jump further. And he pushed me, and I landed on that windowsill with my forehead hitting that windowsill, and it bled profusely. When my brother saw the blood, he ran away. <laughs> he went out, my parents came in, so they put me in the car and took me to the hospital where I had stitches on my head. I have no idea, honest, where it is, where it could have been. Nothing is the same. Could it be here? I have no idea. When I was three years old, 1936, my mother sent me to pre-kindergarten to the Swedish school. Uh, it was somewhere here. I have absolutely no idea. It was in the Musrara quarter, and our headmistress was Miss Eggplant. She was very big and Swedish looking. I went here till grade four which was 1941 and I went to the Jerusalem Girls College an English Anglican Mission School in Rahabia. I was there from fifth grade till secondary two which is equivalent to tenth grade. I'd like to go find my aunt's house now and the Mamilla Cemetery that would be nice and I think it's behind these buildings here I'm not sure, it's either this or that. I have a feeling it's this one. And uh, we used to walk to Cinema Rex very close. And we used to uh, go over the wall to the Muslim cemetery that uh, now has the Wiesenthal Museum of Tolerance, which is very, doesn't go with the idea because they dug up 7th century Muslim graves to build the Museum of Tolerance and they built a parking lot which really got the Muslims very very aggravated and annoyed and we, we had many people sign a petition that they should not do it but of course nothing stops them so they did build the museum. We used to collect butts of cigarettes then we used to go to the cemetery and smoke it in secret. I have fond memories of the place so I want to see it and see what it looks like now. Yeah. We used to come to the YMCA on Saturdays and I used to have uh, swimming lessons and uh, use their library which was wonderful and in the afternoons we used to watch matches of cricket, tennis and cross country races. My father would be in the cricket matches. to come to the old city a lot and uh, we used to do our grocery shopping in our area where we lived in with from small groceries that were owned by Muslim families Abu Hashim, Abu Ahed, uh, Yasin, small groceries we did not have a phone at home so uh, we got our phone calls and we made our phone calls from these small grocery shops. We are in the courtyard of the Holy Sepulchre. This was one of the churches that Empress Helena discovered the crosses 
of Jesus. And uh, during Easter Holy Week, which we are in right now for the Orthodox churches, we have so many tourists. As a young girl, when we lived here, we used to come and uh, we would try to get in on Saturday before Easter. It's called Septenur, which is Saturday of Light. And uh, I have never been able to stay in there because it would get so crowded, I had to get out. I used to like it when it was quiet, when you could come and see where Jesus was brought down from the cross, where people were just lying down and praying. When we had the guests, we used to have a lot of guests from out of town. I used to take them to all these sites. It was just wonderful. I love taking tourists around and showing them my Jerusalem. At the Garden of Gethsemane, we would come on Monday, Thursdays with the Anglican Church, sit on a rock, have our service under one of the olive trees that probably Jesus sat under. Christmas Eve, we used to go to Beit Sahur, where it is shepherd's field. We would sing while shepherds watched their flocks by night. We would have lanterns. And from there, we would proceed to the Church of Nativity. In the courtyard, we would have our services and uh, sing Christmas carols late at night before going back to Jerusalem. Pre-1948, we had 30% Christians in this country, and now we are less than 1%. And that is a very upsetting and worrying problem for Christians uh, because people have fought over for these holy places and now who will take care of them? The first 12, 13 years of my life, Jerusalem was quite peaceful and it was a fun city to grow up in because it was international. But then the Jewish terrorists started becoming active and in 1944, 45, they started blowing up uh, British police and soldiers. And on July 22nd, 1946, few Jewish terrorists, Irgun, blew up the King David Hotel that building housed the government offices of the British colonial system that was governing Palestine then. Over a hundred people were killed. My aunt's sister, Auntie Eugenie, was killed in that bombing. When Palestine was uh, partitioned by the United Nations, many Arab families left their homes and went to a more Arab quarter Jews went to a Jewish quarter. There was fighting going between East Jerusalem and West Jerusalem, which was one Jerusalem once upon a time. And we had bullets actually going through our house. It was getting dangerous to live there. And one night, while we were sleeping, one of these apartments, Mandelbaum apartment, was demolished by Zionists because the Haganah wanted to get a better view of the Arab forces on this side. It was a very traumatic night that we can't forget. We had to move from our house and to come to St. George's, which is right here. And there was a three hour ceasefire because my father had students that were both uh, Jewish and Arab. So because of his being a teacher to these two fighting groups now, we were able to cross with a few suitcases. Careful. When we moved from our house, mm -hmm. we came here. It was the junior part of the school, like from grade kindergarten till fifth grade. And we came with a few suitcases and we lived upstairs there. 
But there's someone living here now. Yeah, right. we can't go in, I don't think. And when there was heavy bombing or fighting, we went to the basement. That was down there. Did you see that? Can this we was open? the main entrance. Yes. Oh. Uh, this was where the borders used to be. That's right. And he and I slept here. Oh, my sister and I, we slept here. Hmm. What is this? I don't know. Things have changed. It's such an old story, my story. Like our guide said, Lucy, you are history. <laughs> You're telling me history. أيوة بحكي عربي بحكي عربي شو اسمك؟ أنا من أمريكا بس أنا كنت من هون. That's where we used to live. The first floor in that house and across is Mandelbaum and our other house was behind it. Abu Nicola's house. No man's land was beyond that. In this apartment, in our living room, where we were staying, uh, the first truce in June 1948, I think it was the 8th of June, uh, the first truce was signed and it was headed by Count Bernadotte. He was a Swedish count. Somehow or other, he fell afoul of the Zionist authorities and they had him assassinated and this is where they signed the truce because the line between Israel and Jordan was right that street behind us. The truce lasted a month and it was no truce because both sides were arming and that's when we went to Amman because we knew there was going to be heavier fighting and we stayed in the CMS which is Christian Mission School so they gave each refugee family one classroom to stay in and uh, there were five of us, and then Uncle Sarkis, Auntie Sophie, Johnny and Vicky, they had nowhere to go. So they came and nine of us stayed in the one room. When we came back from my man, the fighting got worse and all our friends had left the country. You just adapt. The circumstances force you to adjust rapidly. Exactly, it, it was either stay in war or escape being killed. We were fortunate we had a house. We were fortunate we had a room because there were others in tents. Mahik? We're on our way to Ramallah. We used to come to Ramallah for recreation. We would take the bus. In 10 minutes, we would be in Ramallah. We'd have ice cream. We'd walk around the stores. I was so surprised, first of all, by the time it took to get to Ramallah, Going through Kalandia, you have to go through checkpoint. It used to take 10 minutes, now it takes 40 minutes. And then there is this terrible looking segregation wall, security wall that the Israelis call it supposedly for their security. But in reality, it is for segregating the population. Behind the wall is the West Bank. That's where the Palestinian people live. All have to have permits to come and to move. So their movement is controlled and restricted. Supposedly they're free, but they're bound by walls, watchtowers, soldiers, checkpoints. It's scary, it's terrible. It's all about power and uh, just breaking the morale of the people. Hi Lucy, hi, welcome to Jerusalem. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Habib, how are you? How are you? Hi, hey, Peter, what a big surprise. Wow. Okay, the water boiled. Okay. I filled it with hot water. Love it. <laughs> it's kind of humid today, hot, bothersome. Peter, it's hot but not humid. We never agree on anything. So <laughs> we do, we do. Listen, never mind that. Just <laughs> tell me, how did you meet Frank Stone and what happened? Frank Stone, he's a wonderful man. 
Haig mm -hmm. was walking in the streets of Jerusalem, right near St. George's, and he met this American guy who said, uh, I want to go to Petra. How can I get there? Because this was 1951 summer, mm -hmm. and Petra okay. had been rediscovered in 1948. Mm -hmm. And Haig said, oh, why don't you come up to our apartment? My father took the school teachers uh, to Petra during Easter holiday. You were with them, weren't you? Yes, I was. Tell me about it. It was a long trip, I remember that, and we had to pack all our food. There were no hotel accommodations. Water was rationed, and when we arrived in Petra, which was, as I said, a long trip, uh, we had to either sleep? in the caves, two wow. caves, one for the ladies and one for the men. Nice. Because I was young, I was put with the ladies. <laughs> so You're was, always with the ladies. Uh, Nothing that, has that's changed. That's right. That's like right. Like <laughs> All right. Too. Now let's go back to Frank. Let's go back to Frank. Uh, so Frank came up to the apartment with Haig. I gave him coffee, Turkish Armenian coffee, and a few cookies. And he said, and young lady, uh, what are your future plans? Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I've applied to two universities in the United States. He said, why don't you wait? When I go back, I'll go to my alma mater. He had finished Heidelberg and was at Oberlin now. And I will see if I can get you a scholarship. And every day I was waiting for mail from Frank Stone to hear about my scholarship. And uh, at the end of that summer, I did get my scholarship from Heidelberg for full academic scholarship. You all saw me off at Kalandia. Kalandia Airport, Airport. I remember that. All yes. my friends came to see me off at Kalandia my Airport. My sister, yeah, yeah, yeah, everybody came to wave goodbye. So that's what one cup of coffee did for me. Maybe Annie can listen more intently. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'm going to show you pictures of my babyhood. This was taken by Andy's father, Uncle Sepillian. That's me, my brother Haig, two, year, two years younger than me, Anahid, three years younger than Haig, and Peter, seven years younger than Anahid, 12 years younger than me. This is my brother Peter. He, I'm 12 years older than you, kid. Mm -hmm. And that's me. I loved him. I, mm. He was a cute oh, baby. He used to be very cute. This is Susie, your yeah. older sister. And we used to smoke in the cemetery by yeah. secret. Oh, <laughs> my, my God. Don't tell. I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> I left for the United States in September 1952, headed to Heidelberg College where I was three years and got my BA in biology. And from there I went to Emory University and got my master's in plant ecology. I met Edward Janjigan in Atlanta. I fell in love. We got married in eight weeks and came back to live in Lebanon. In 58, my husband wanted to come to the States on a business trip. I asked to come with him. The Marines landed in Lebanon, and his father advised us to try and stay in the U.S. because he said this is no place to be and to raise a family. Our daughter, Denise, was born 1960. Two years later, Mark was born, and in 1964, Charles. I have uh, 10 grandchildren, and I have one great-grandson. That makes me a great-grandmother. I love Jerusalem. I love my roots in Jerusalem. I want to keep my roots in Jerusalem. And my childhood friendships I treasure. Like I have two friends right here, three friends actually. Well, I think it has something to do with the fact that Israel is trying to monopolize Jerusalem and occupy it and make it a purely Jewish city. And, and I think that brings out the rebellion in most of those who lived and were reared in Jerusalem to lay a claim to it and to document it. Yeah, and maybe I have a little rebel in me. You know, I'm Armenian. When we went on a trip to the States, we would never thought of staying there. And that was the uh, third time I had left my home and left everything. 
and you just start all over. But you know what? There is a power within, a joy and a will to live, and you keep going on, no matter what the circumstance. Արձական կերուստանքերությունը ձեզ է առաջարկում իր բազմապիսի ծարայությունները, պատրաստել վիդեո կլիպներ, արվեստագետների, երկիչ երաժիշների, մասնավոր բիզնեսների համար, որով կարող է գովազդել ձեր գործունեությունը Արձագան կսիրով կարող է շնոր հավորեր ձեր կյանքի հիշարժան իրադարդությունը իր հեռուստայքրանից հաճելի պահեր պաճարորով ձեզ և ձեր հարազատներին։ Այնպես որ հիշեք, արձագանք իր բասնապիսի առաջարկներով սպ Այսքանով ամպոպում ենք մեր հաղորդումը ձեզ նվիրելով իր աժշտական տեսահոլովակ, ծտեսություն մինչ նոր հանդիպում հաջորդ շապատ։ Sure. 